Revenge Films. Up until the age of 10, I was in a living hell, growing up in the worst environment. My father often went gambling, but whenever he would lose, he would always come home and use me like a sandbag, punching and kicking my stomach and my back. My mother, being my mother, would say, It's your fault that we have to pay for food and groceries. Here, why don't you eat this? And she would throw a bag full of crumbs and bread crust that she would get for free from the bakery. Of course, she had never cooked for me my entire life. But when my dad would come home after losing at the casino and throw a tantrum around the house, for whatever reason, my mom would take out her bottled up stress onto me. It's your fault that he's losing. You're a curse to this entire family. She would yell things like this at me and slap me. Since she didn't have much strength like my father, she would usually pick up whatever object she could get her hands on to come hit me. Of course, my mom was receiving a monthly child allowance from the government. But as soon as that was deposited into her account, it would disappear as my father's gambling money or my mother's lunch money. I was still attending school at the time, but I was always the laughing stock of the entire class. Hey, you stink! Do you not know how to shower? Ugh, smelly! Don't come near me! In reality, whenever I would try to take a bath, I was told that it was a waste of the water bill. I actually wasn't able to bathe properly, so I did smell awful all the time. But I was only a kid, and there was nowhere that I could run to, so that life continued for me until I was ten years old. Then, one day, diagonally across the street from our house, a young couple moved in. He was a handsome husband. Let's call him Mr. B, with a beautiful wife. And between them, they had a very cute little baby. They were the picture-perfect family. At the time, they looked like angels to me, as if they had come from a world above the clouds. Mr. B was outgoing and friendly, and I often saw him chatting with people around the neighborhood. But my parents were sure to never go anywhere near him or their house. When Mr. B came to our house to introduce himself, for some reason they greeted him with the most unwelcoming sour faces. And around that time, for some reason, my mother stopped leaving the house. She always seemed scared of something, and she would make me go do all the shopping and errands for her. Then one day, when I had gone to do the shopping in my usual ratty and dirty clothes, I accidentally locked eyes with Mr. B's wife. I always felt like we lived in completely different worlds. And more than anything, I was so embarrassed of how disgusting I looked. So I put my head down and tried to walk past without saying anything. But then, it's Sarah, right? And she waved at me from across the street. Yes? Hey, I have some really delicious sweets that I received from one of the neighbors, but I can't eat it all myself. So I was wondering if you wouldn't mind having some with me? The word sweets was so attractive to me. But I felt even more embarrassed by the fact that I was being lured by some food, and I ran away. One week later, I was being treated like a sandbag as usual by my horrible parents. As I tried to bear the pain and go out to do the shopping, this time I ran into Mr. B who was on his way home from work. He looked at the state of my face and my body and let out a gasp, saying, what happened? Those are some terrible bruises and scars. I had been getting beaten up until just a few minutes ago, so my face was also swollen. Mr. B grabbed my hand and quickly shuffled me into his house. When his wife saw me, she looked shocked at first, but she immediately put on a kind smile and invited me into her home. Here, go ahead and take a bath. She showed me where the bathroom was, and when I had come out of the shower, I was surprised to find brand new clothes in my size, waiting for me by the sink. Um, this? The other day I saw it at the store and I thought it would look great on you, so I just had to get it. She looked at me in the dress and smiled. I was shocked. I couldn't understand why this person that I had just met would buy clothes for me. Then I started to think that maybe I was so dirty and smelled so bad that this was her polite way of telling me that, and I became flustered with embarrassment. So I tried to excuse myself as quickly as possible. Um, thank you very much. I should go now. But Mr. B's wife quickly jumped in, saying, I was just finishing up the beef stew and the croquettes and the chicken noodle soup. It should be done very soon. I couldn't figure out what was going on, 
but suddenly I was hit by the amazing smell of the food wafting from the kitchen, and I was entranced. Then Mr. B said, I've already contacted your mom, and she said it's okay if you stay here for the night, so don't worry. When he said that, I was just so happy that I wouldn't have to go back to that house tonight, and I felt a sigh of relief from the bottom of my heart. Shortly after, I sat down at the dinner table with Mr. B and his wife and stuffed myself with their amazing home-cooked meal. After dinner, they even let me play with their baby, and it was my first time holding a life so small. Around 9 p.m., they both looked at me with very serious expressions on their faces and started talking to me. Hey, we need you to listen very carefully to us because this is important. Important? Yeah. Mr. B proceeded to explain everything very slowly and calmly so that a child like me could understand. He started to tell me that he was actually my brother and that my toxic parents said that their lives were made difficult because of him. So one day they suddenly dropped him off at his aunt and uncle's house and ran away. After that, his aunt and uncle who didn't have any children raised him with love and care, eventually officially adopting him as their own. Once he was no longer under my parents' care, he grew up happily. But then he found out that he had a younger sister who was still living with those two horrible humans. He wasn't hearing anything good about the family, especially about me, and he couldn't stand still anymore and moved in across the street. I was so shocked by everything that he was telling me that my brain was well over capacity. Mr. B, my brother, could tell that I was distraught and he came over to hug me and patted me gently on the head. So you see, I was thinking that as your brother, I want to live with you. I want you to live with us. What? Do you not want to? N no, no, I want to. I want to live with you. I could live with my brother. I could finally get out of that hellish house. When I thought about that, the tears started flooding down my face. Well, I'm glad. Everything's going to be okay now, because your brother is here to protect you. Things move fast from there. The next day, I went back to my house with my brother and his wife. And when my parents saw my brother's face, they both went completely pale. Sarah, I'm going to be talking here for a little while. So go to your room and start packing up your things. Okay. This house that I had spent my life so terrified in suddenly felt fearless with my brother standing in the doorway. As I was getting my things ready, I could hear my brother's booming voice echo throughout the house, but I wasn't scared at all. When I got back to the doorway, I don't know if my father had been hit by my brother, but he was sitting on the floor unable to move, and my mother was shaking from head to toe in fear. These two monsters who I had been so scared of suddenly looked so small. After getting me out of the house, my brother dragged my parents straight to the police station. Child services were also contacted, and they were able to get witness statements from multiple neighbors as well as my school. It all came to light, like how they hadn't been feeding me properly, how they had been physically and emotionally abusing me. Everything they had done turned into crimes that kept piling on, and they were arrested hand in hand. As my parents were convicted, I officially moved into my brother's home. You don't have to worry anymore. I'm going to be taking care of you now place of those people unworthy of being called parents. So if there's anything you need or anything you want to talk about, you come straight to your brother, okay? Hey now, I'm here too, you know. It's a lot easier to talk girl to girl, so you can always come to talk to me too, okay? My clumsy brother's wife was also so kind, and for the first time in my life, I felt true happiness. It turns out that my brother was building a company online, and that made him the president of a company, and I was surprised. He then said, I know that this neighborhood and these streets hold way too many terrible memories for you. How would you feel about moving with us to a new place and starting our new lives together? But didn't you guys just move here? Are you sure it's okay? We only moved here to save you. We have absolutely no need or reason to stay. I couldn't believe that he had done all of that just to come get me and I nodded my head with a big old yes. And so, with my new family, we moved to the state where my aunt and uncle who had raised my brother were living. It really did feel like I was starting a new life. When I met my uncle's wife for the first time, she had a whole spread prepared for us. 
I wasn't sure what you might like, so I got a little carried away and ended up buying everything. She laughed warmly as she offered us sweets and baked goods of all different kinds. And then my uncle chimed in. You can relax now. You have nothing more to worry about, okay? You have your brother and your uncle here to take care of you now. And reassured me. I had never felt this safe in my life. Even after we had moved to a different state, when my brother and his wife found out just how terribly my parents had been treating me, they hired a detective agency to gather concrete evidence on my behalf. They took that to family court and legally released me of any relationship to my parents. Once that was finalized, just like they had done for my brother, my uncle and his wife officially adopted me as their child. At first, they suggested that I could live with my uncle and his wife, but because my brother and his wife kept insisting that they wanted to live with me, I'm now living with them in our new home. But our houses are in the same neighborhood, just down the street. So every time I go over to my uncle's house, his wife always has delicious looking sweets coming fresh out of the oven for me. And our new home, my brother had even prepared a room just for me. This, this is my room? Just for me? Are you sure I can use it? The room was everything I'd ever dreamed of. A bedroom fit for a princess. Of course this is for you. Do you like the interior that I designed just for you? Yeah! Moving to a new place also meant moving to a new school. And I was able to start fresh in school, making new friends and actually enjoying my studies. Nowadays, I'm so happy living with my brother, his wife, and my baby sister that my life in that hell almost feels like it was just a bad nightmare. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.